Hello and welcome to the third video as we program a full game of Hangman. In the last video, we have a working prototype of Hangman, although we have some placeholder ASCII art in there, and we don't have a lot of bells and whistles. So in this video, we're going to expand the word list as well as get rid of those placeholder graphics and replace them with actual gallows. Let's head over to the programming environment and get started programming Hangman. All right, so we're back in our programming environment. Uh, the first thing that I want to do in this game is I want to get rid of these placeholders and I want to replace them with gallows. Now, uh, you certainly don't want to hear me talk for the five or 10 minutes this is going to take. So let's go ahead and time lapse through this and so you can see what this will end up looking like. so there we go we have our uh, ASCII art gallows when the user has missed nothing we're displaying that right there when they miss one we draw the head then we draw the body an arm another arm the leg um, as I was drawing this I, I realized the game's gonna end before we draw the completed hangman guy so we'll address that in a bit but let's go ahead and just test this and make sure that it's working correctly so we'll run our program again and um, we got one little problem right there. Um, let's see, what is going on? So, okay, I figured out what it was. I actually had to pause the video there for a second because I was getting a little uh, screwed up and couldn't figure out what was going on. But uh, it, it's pretty simple now that I recognize it. So in this original code right here, our uh, hangman gallows ends with a backslash here on this line. Now the backslash is used as an escape character in Python. So you most commonly see me use that when I do backslash n for a new line, but there's backslash t for uh, tab. Well, of course, if you want to draw a backslash in Python, you actually need two backslashes. So what I did wrong was I needed two backslashes on my gallows. And so you can see now that's what fixed that bug right there. So our word is airplane. And you can see everything is displaying correctly now. So Q, B, N, H, R, F, T, and that game is over. So that was what was wrong. That's why it was displaying kind of funny up here. Um, you can see I, I ran it a bunch of times so I figured out what was going on, but the reason it was displaying kind of goofy here is that was a backslash right there and I wasn't using it properly. So we have our gallows drawn. One of the problems that this is going to create though is you can see when the game is over, we're not getting a, a final drawing. So let's fix that right now. The way I'm gonna fix that is I'm just gonna keep my, uh, my list as it is right now but I am going to add another case and this will, we'll just manually uh, print this one out. So let's go ahead and add a new gallow and this will have the final guy hanging and this is it, where we're adding this is index location. Let's see, this is zero, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So hangman board at index location six is the actual dead hangman. So after the user loses, we'll just go ahead and print, uh, what was the name of that variable? Uh, hangman board. So hangman board at index location six. And that way when the user loses, they'll actually get um, to see their, their poor ASCII art hangman uh, dead on the gallows. Let's make sure that's working. So we're going to end the game right here. So let's guess a Q. And it says game over, the word was speaker, but now because we're manually printing that, that final gallows in our ASCII art, the user is greeted with their dead hanging man. So for the most part, our game is working. Let's go ahead and uh, 
guess. Let's uh, make sure that we're still correctly uh, able to play the game. So I C L H. So we are, the game is still working with a win condition, but one of the things that kind of drives me nuts about this program right now is this hangman board ASCII art takes up so much in the main program, and it may not be a big deal in a program that's small, but I really don't like this ASCII art boogering up my entire program. So I want to move that to another Python file so that I don't have to look at it when I'm working on my actual game. So to do that, I'm going to create a new window. And I'm going to copy and paste this entire hangman board variable to that. I'm going to delete this out of my main program. And this file over here, I'm going to save as. And we're going to put this in the directory where I keep all my Python code. And I'm going to call this resources.py. So this is going to be my resources file. I'm also going to import resources and uh, make sure that it's importing correctly. Uh, I know the program's not going to work now because hangman board is not defined, but that's, that's good. I'm not getting an error when I try and import resources, so that is being imported correctly. And I can even test that by typing resources and then dot hangman board because that re resources.py file now has a variable called hangman board. And let's just do index location one. And you can see, of course, there is my, uh, there's the code that represents my hangman board with a single head. So now we've imported resources to get that code out. Now we have to go into where we're drawing hangman board and add resources dot hangman board. We're also going to have to do that down at the bottom of our program at resources dot hangman board. So every place in this program where we called hangman board, I'm just going to put resources in front of it so that we can call this third Python file where we've got the hangman board variable hanging out right now. So let's test it and make sure that we've gotten that correct. And see everything is working correctly. We're just calling it from the alternate Python file. The word is computer. So let's uh, go ahead and miss this QWZX uh, L and V. And there were no bugs. So that's fantastic. The next thing we're going to do is get the word correct. So our word is vehicle. V-E-H-I-C-L-E, -E, and we are correctly winning the game as well. So with that little change right there, we have taken that huge block of code that was really kind of ugly and moved it over to a new Python file called resources. So I don't need this resources file here anymore, so let's go ahead and minimize that. Uh, eventually, I would want to move this word list file over there. Um, the goal would be to have hundreds or thousands of words that the program could pick from, and I wouldn't want that cluttering up this program. But uh, again, you, you probably know enough to do that right now. Uh, I no longer need this debug code, so let's go ahead and comment that out. But let's add just a few more words to make the game more challenging now that we're going to give it a final test run. So let's go with giraffe and fox and bumblebee and farmer and grass and orchard and apple and maybe just a few more words. Let's go fallout and house. So that's our word list now. Again, I'd like it to be longer, but it'll work for, for the purposes of this video. Let's go ahead and run the program again and see if we can guess the word. So I have no idea what this word is. I'm going to start with an E. And E is a missed letter, so let's try an I. I is also a missed letter. Let's go with an O. Okay, so it starts with O. U. A, and what word could this be? Let's try a B. Nope, let's try a T. Let's try a W. Nope, and the word was orchard. 
So we did not win that game. But if we try it again and go with an an A, starts with an A, maybe it's airplane. Nope. Ends with an E. No, that's probably Apple. And we've guessed Apple. And you can see we have a working game of Hangman right now. And that's really all there is to a game of Hangman. It may look rather confusing on the surface. I mean, you look at all this code right here, and it looks like there's a lot going on. But really, it's a pretty simple iteration of Hangman. Now, eventually, what you could do is add a score to it so that in this main game loop right here, it doesn't break when, when the user guesses correctly. It starts throwing multiple words out at them. Uh, you could also add difficulty, have three word lists, one with short words, one with medium-sized word, one with long words. So there's a lot you could do with this program, but right now we do have a working game of Hangman. That's fantastic. And that will end the Let's Build Hangman series. So hopefully you had a good time programming a working game of Hangman. Hopefully you learned a lot about how Python works and how you can take all these things that you've learned if you've been following the uh, Python tutorial series and the Let's Program Hangman series, all the stuff we've been doing, uh, hopefully you can see how you can put that all together into a final working game. It's not the greatest game in the world, but it is a functioning game, and it does allow you to play Hangman by yourself, which of course is every person's dream. Uh, you know, normally you need someone to play Hangman with you, now you can play by yourself. Uh, thank you so much for watching the Let's Program Hangman series and for your support of the Python tutorial series. As always, if you have any questions or there's anything I can help you with in your own programs, please leave them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them as quickly as I can. Thank you so much for your support and have a great day.